Thank you very much. I will do without uh, power presentation. I hope uh, the power of my word will uh, do something for your subject matter. Uh, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for including me since I'm uh, in many ways an outsider uh, to, to the issue here, but maybe I could uh, and might something contribute to how do we deal with, as international community, with the facts of destruction post-conflict. Uh, uh, actually, um, Helen Vanasek, by the way, this book is just out from her and the very solid and excellent uh, foundation for, to discuss uh, the Bosnia case, which I will now do. Um, actually, what, uh, how, why did the international community react in such a way as it did in Bosnia-Herzegovina, where while during the war, uh, it, it was basically an onlooker? Uh, there was not much activity apart from registering the destruction, but uh, the, U, uh, the UN forces, for example, never uh, took uh, the task upon them to defend uh, or to protect uh, the uh, cultural uh, sites uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, uh, my task here is to talk about the response. What has the international community actually done? And I would like to share with you some of my own very practical experience, having been the so-called uh, high representative of the international community for Bosnia and Herzegovina around the turn of the century, 1999 to 2002, actually the crucial years after uh, the war in, in the implementation of the Dayton Peace uh, Accords. Uh, uh, as some of you might recall, the United States-led uh, humanitarian intervention stopped the war in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and it was again the United States who, uh, who introduced and who led the peace effort, uh, which uh, uh, then produced the Dayton uh, Peace Accord. By the way, one of the most ambitious peace treaties around, and uh, because the goal was and still is nothing less than uh, state building. Now, uh, Dayton is remarkable for several reasons, for geopol uh, geopolitically speaking. Uh, clearly, this was the U uh, US uh, unipolar moment where uh, the United States could indeed dictate what uh, should happen. It was also uh, this kind of feeling uh, of uh, a positive feeling, I would say, uh, of this kind of liberal uh, imperialism, uh, a can-do mentality when stopping uh, 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 in particular wars and uh, asymmetric conflicts. Now, uh, the Dayton Peace Accord, with the consent of uh, the government of Bosnia-Herzegovina and uh, uh, the neighboring uh, countries, Croatia and uh, um, Yugoslavia, then small Yugoslavia, Milosevic Yugoslavia, uh, turned Bosnia-Herzegovina into sort of a semi-international semi protectorate, which uh, uh, was based on two pillars, a military and a civilian part. Of course, the military was extremely important at the beginning when there was still uh, uh, lots of tensions around and nobody uh, was really sure whether this would not uh, fall back into uh, yet another uh, military conflict. Now, the civilian part uh, uh, of the peace implementation effort that I was uh, uh, in charge of um, was the so-called Office of the High Representative. This is an ad hoc uh, international organization uh, that was specifically designed for the implementation of the Dayton Accords. And it is indeed part of uh, the Dayton Accords as one of the annexes. Now, uh, the so-called high representative there, the, uh, the top uh, civil administrator, uh, is the final authority in theater, as uh, uh, the accords uh, put out, with two very important uh, features. Uh, the high representative, as a person, this, this is uh, directly vested into uh, his position, to impose legislation and to dismiss by decree uh, uh, public figures which uh, unfortunately I had to do more than 100 times. Now, the stated goal of the Dayton Accord was to reverse the impact of ethnic cleansing, to preserve the unity of uh, the state and to bring back in particular uh, the more than two million refugees and uh, IDPs. Uh, 
uh, internally displaced uh, persons. Of course, the priorities at the beginning were far more directed towards uh, uh, the humanitarian issues. This was really a fight about the sheer survivor, and also to create a safe and secure environment, both for the population as well as uh, for the international uh, community which went there at the beginning uh, was about around 60,000 uh, military and uh, several hundred, then several thousand uh, uh, civilians working there, both uh, uh, diplomats, uh, governments, international, international officials as well as NGOs. Now, um, as I've already mentioned, um, the centerpiece of the Dayton Accord really is to bring back uh, the, uh, the expelled population. Uh, as I said, the population of uh, altogether uh, barely 4 million and th more than 50% were expelled. And the issue, of course, was how, d how do we actually counter uh, the ethnic cleansing, uh, uh, the terrible word for something, and what, what actually spells success. And success in bringing back uh, refugees and IDPs was really, do, can they go back uh, into territories, into areas where they then, uh, where they are part of the uh, minority of either Serbs, Croats, or uh, Bosniaks? Now, uh, in uh, 2000, and this is quite interesting, um, I was there, as I said, between 99 and 2002, there was a breakthrough in, uh, um, in uh, minority returns, uh, uh, even uh, Human Rights Watch, which is usually uh, not very friendly with international organizations, uh, was speaking of a breakthrough and uh, uh, in very positive terms about the work that we are doing there. And it was a coincidence that also in the year 2000, actually, the, the UNESCO-led efforts uh, to, uh, to, uh, bring, to, to deal with the cultural um, devastation there came to an end. It, it was handed over to the local government. Now, one thing is important to mention, and this is that actually this is the first uh, peace treaty, and there are not many others. I used to uh, uh, negotiate the uh, Rambouillet Agreement uh, for for Bosnia, uh, for Kosovo, and there the, the the cultural aspect is mentioned, but not that as prominently as in the case of Bosnia Herzegovina, where the Annex Eight actually uh, created uh, a commission to preserve national uh, monuments. Uh, um, Annex 8 was in the first couple of years of a rather limited success uh, under UNESCO guidance. Uh, there was a list of monuments uh, uh, that was uh, created, but there was no formal process to speak of uh, uh, how to go uh, about. Uh, but then the year 2000, when, uh, when more and more refugees found their way back uh, uh, into their original villages and uh, smaller towns usually, um, there, there started a sort of, a, I would say, interplay uh, between the two Dayton provisions. This is uh, Annex 7, refugee return, on the one hand, and Annex 8, uh, uh, as uh, the Commission to Preserve uh, National Dog uh, Monuments on the other hand. And uh, uh, clearly it was, uh, and that was pointed out in Helen's uh, presentation already, it was mostly uh, uh, Muslim sacred buildings, uh, mosques that, uh, that were destroyed, uh, and this in a very systematic way because uh, the idea on the Serb side was really to create what they, what they referred to as a greater Serbia project. Now, um, we had to, uh, we, on the other hand, the international community, we had to consider uh, in order to make the returns sustainable uh, that rehabilitation, uh, the reconstruction, uh, was very important. This is uh, the other side. Uh, it, it was used uh, to reverse the ethnic cleansing, so to speak, the physical cleansing, if you, uh, if you may. Uh, in order to make it uh, sustainable, which of course includes to sort of recreate a, se a sense of belonging, uh, also safety, security is very much uh, uh, attached to this. Uh, in short, to stabilize those, uh, uh, those communities uh, there who were shaken uh, so thoroughly. 
And of course, it was, it was also thought to be some sort of uh, eventual reconciliation and truth-finding uh, exercise, which will have to come underway uh, eventually. Uh, there, we also need to, to clearly deal with this systematic destruction of cultural uh, monuments. So, uh, now, uh, the question, of course, is also that the interesting uh, thing that happened is that uh, uh, the, with the increasing returns and more and more efforts, which were frustrated in the first uh, couple of years uh, uh, to rebuild this uh, mosque, this led to several violent clashes and uh, incidents, uh, particularly in Serb-dominated uh, areas, uh, like uh, on two occasions in Banja Luka, the capital of uh, uh, the Serb-dominated uh, ent entity Republika Srpska, where a corner uh, stone laying ceremony uh, was uh, uh, ambushed uh, by extremists and hooligans, and also another one in another Serb-dominated town of Trebinje, not far away from uh, uh, from Dubrovnik, if you know where Dubrovnik is, Apivat and one hour's drive, but inside of Bosnia and Herzegovina, not in Croatia where du Dubrovnik is. Now, um, this made it necessary to uh, thoroughly reconsider actually how to move forward in the implementation of uh, uh, this uh, Annex uh, 8 uh, and the commission even. My office decided on taking a wholly new uh, approach, which, which was basically uh, based uh, or let's say on, 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 two, uh, on, on, on two elements, a, a two-track approach, if you may. Uh, first and foremost, to harmonize uh, legislation in the country and the different layers of governance that existed there, created by the Dayton Accord, far too over-convoluted and far too complex, but uh, that's just a fact. Um, and uh, this legislation basically uh, served to, uh, to hinder and to obstruct uh, uh, any meaningful uh, action there, not just in the cultural field, of course, in many other fields as well. And secondly, uh, to, uh, to reconstitute uh, this uh, commission for uh, the cultural uh, monuments. Uh, at the time, and I, when, I, when I, in preparing for this, uh, for this uh, small and short uh, uh, lecture, I went over, my, over the papers uh, from that time, and there I reread a letter with, uh, which I wrote to the UNESCO Director General at the time, uh, where I complained about the Byzantine jungle of non-uniform laws concerning construction permit application. It's kind of a hyperbolic, uh, the language, but uh, uh, it also expresses uh, the frustration uh, that we were confronted with. Now, what followed was a drawn-out uh, negotiation process. Working groups were set in draftings. Uh, uh, drafting sessions uh, took uh, place, and I had basically to mediate between local actors, international community, the security aspect, for example. Uh, the stabilization force there, the NATO-led, was not very happy about those uh, violent incidents uh, uh, because they were in charge of uh, uh, safe and secure environments. Now, uh, thanks to the powers uh, invested in me, and this needs to be uh, underlined here as high representative, I eventually amended uh, the laws uh, and I imposed in the Republika Srpska the whole legislation because uh, the National Assembly there simply would not have uh, uh, done uh, its job. Now, um, at the same time, and let me just mention those uh, uh, a few examples which took place simultaneously, and that was where my uh, decision on the location of the cemetery uh, for the Srebrenica uh, victims, as well as the Missing Persons Initiative, DNA-based uh, identification process that took place. And we also very much supported the ICTY, the Yugoslavia uh, Tribunal, uh, to include cultural genocide in it. And on the other hand, there were also business activities where one was trying to, so to speak, disrupt uh, these cultural reconstructions. Of course, this all was intended to foster normalization and to support the community uh, building efforts. Now, 15 years on, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina is still a very much divided uh, society. I'm afraid that it's on a downward uh, spiral. Uh, and, but there are also some positive things. First, of all, the, the, the commission, the Annex 8 commission, is arguably the only success story uh, 
uh, when it comes to the state level uh, institutions in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. We know that uh, all the so called national museums and galleries uh, are closed. Uh, there is no money for this, but above all, there is no common narrative for the state of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Maybe we will speak later on about the lessons because there are some uh, that could be drawn from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you so much.